Joining me in Sydney, Joe Hildebrand, great to see you. Lovely to see you, Sharon. And in Canberra, Andrew Carswell. Well, let's start with Thanks, The Sharon. Voice. Um, Joe, look, you've been a big defender of The Voice. Yep. What went wrong here? And can Albanese still lead the country or is his position now ultimately untenable? Well, I don't think we have long enough on this show to, to go through what went wrong. Pretty much everything went wrong for the campaign. Calling Australians racist was wrong. Not having simple answers for questions like what does this mean for treaty uh, was wrong. Um, making it look like the same old renter crowd. I mean, the faces I saw supporting this, you know, going for a, you know, a walk around Redfern in support of The Voice. I mean, if 250,000 people walking across the Harbour Bridge didn't get an apology from the Howard government, what on earth do they think that a handful of protests would get or a handful of marches in solidarity or whatever they were would get for The Voice. I don't. I think they were delusional about uh, how it could be turned around. They thought that all the undecided voters that they'd somehow managed to marginalise would miraculously come back to them if they just kept doing the same old stuff. Mm. Uh, the rally, uh, the, the, the campaign I saw, and you can see I'm pretty frustrated. I've been saying a lot of this stuff privately to various figures, but um, I've been warning that this was heading off a cliff for months and months and months and months and that it needed something very, very big, a full reboot, a full mm. reset that didn't happen the same old people kept saying the same old things and we saw this the ridiculous um, notion that Australians were racist so they wouldn't support it we saw yeah. people talking about it as though it was something not practical and positive for the future but rather this is something that we owed Indigenous people because of all the, the mistreatment of, um, of generations past that resonates really badly with uh, in migrant Australians especially new Australians and that's why we saw a whole bunch of rich white people supporting the voice and in southwestern and western mm. Sydney and other migrant communities, a whole bunch of people rejecting it two to one. Tell me how that's a good campaign. Mm -hmm. Andrew Carswell, I mean, it's not really a surprise. You accuse people of being racist. You, you know, call them chicken littles, accuse them of misinformation. You know, what could turn them off? Yeah, massive mismanagement by the, the PM in this regards. And, and, and it comes down to uh, a, a, a lack of clarity uh, and stubbornness from his part as well. I mean, if you were passionate about seeing the voice set up in Australia and giving advice to Parliament, if, that, if, 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 you, if you hung your, your Prime Ministership on this very issue, wouldn't you sit down and seek bipartisanship from the start of that process... Uh, not, not, not anywhere through the process did he seek to do that. Uh, and he admitted on Saturday night, this is the Prime Minister, admitted that no referenda had been successful in Australia without uh, the, the support of the opposition party. Mm. So knowing that uh, was going to be the outcome, he still set off on that boat to achieve uh, what, what he set out to achieve. And, and that, mm. that is just total stubbornness from my point of view. Mm.